This is AI Dungeon Crawlers. Today is Monday, October 10th, 2022. And welcome to the dungeon, where we five traverse the treacherous mind of a sinister AI, programmed with the insights of 10,000 authors, throwing workplace safety violations at our every turn as we struggle to write the most fantastical movie musical since it became uncouth to crush old ladies under a house political correctness god mad i'd like to say thank you to our patrons twask and katarina if you want to join us on patreon and support the show you can click the link down below it really is the best way to support the show and guarantees that we get most of the money not amazon or youtube that being said we greatly appreciate any tips bits and subs they don't go to waste we have a few new shows in the works and we'd like to expand our presence. The easiest way to have that happen faster is with audience support. Every little bit helps. First and foremost, of course, shout out to King of Autumn 96 who's subscribed for 14 months in a row. An incredible amount of time. Let's go indeed. Now, joining me tonight, somewhere over the rainbow, it's Eric Lehman. Way up high, it's Noah Schaefer. There's a man that I heard of, and that must be Ryan Whittle. And I, I hope we don't put her to sleep because she's in a lullaby. It's Melissa Morris. Welcome to the show, everybody. How are we all doing today? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We'll we'll push through. The gods test us anytime we try to do a musical episode. <laughs> so. <laughs> ah, Eric, how was your weekend? Tell me a bit about you. I was muted. They heard nothing that I said. No, um, no. <laughs> it's doing the thing, Jack. It's the doing gods, the, they're the testing us. The OBS they're thing. That's okay. All right, I I went and I did my first um, I did I did my first uh, artistic goal for uh, our mind, body, and soul goals in our Discord. I went to uh, the Guild Hall Inn in Scarborough and saw a bunch of the old facades. Do you know that there are old facades in Toronto that uh, of of old built hundred year old buildings that get preserved in in a big park? It's pretty cool. Got were there see. like particularly nice facades? One that some you of them were really spoke to you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty cool. There was the hearth of the fireplace of the uh, guy who invented insulin. Hey, <laughs> hey, all right. That's pretty neat. <laughs> a Canadian treasure. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It was. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and they made um. They made it. They make it. They they took a bunch because they got, like more pillars and they know what to do with. Um, <laughs> so they made like this giant um, Greek style amphitheater. Um, with, uh, you know, three entrances and things. It's this giant, like, white alabasta kind of, you know, space. Very, very cool. There was a wedding going on while I was there. Uh, they were of take, course. They were t hogging the damn amphitheater. God, so inconsiderate. Now, I don't think the audience heard this because you were muted, but you said you completed your first um, task, or no, your goal of the mind body spirit yeah. goal in our Discord. But that's not true. You had done one mere days earlier. I said the first artistic goal. Well, they didn't know that, I guess. The That's Apple true. Chris was my physical goal. Melissa, really you have Ryan, you both have no idea what we're talking about. I I'm aware. But um we yeah, we we do we we've started doing monthly goals to, you know, make sure we're getting off the couch and doing things we dream of and give and you know, because I think most of life is just us making excuses to not do the things that we really want to do. So we should start making excuses to do those things that we want to do. Um, and so I have three goals this month. I am going to cook a nice special meal in my cast iron pan and give a little bit of extra effort every week. I made an apple crisp for movie night where Jack, Emma, Noah, and I um, watched The Ice Storm by Ang Lee. And uh, yeah, I went and I'm writing a poem every week by going to a place I've never been to in Toronto. And I'm trying to implement a piece of Greco-Roman technology based on the lectures that I'm listening to for my mental goal. Have you figured out what that's going to look like? I've yet? got no idea, but I did <laughs> learn. Really? But I did learn today mm -hmm. that oak has lower tensile strength than pine. What? Great. That's amazing. What? 
What are you gonna build a really good hammer? <laughs> Trebuchet. <laughs> <laughs> hey i don't know keep the neighbors no, down um, yeah anyways I'll, I'll get back to you on that stay tuned in our discord to see oh, man. Uh, i don't know but i'm trebuchet. <laughs> incredible i have a um, martini today as well jack i'm really happy great all right how about we circle back to the drinking game stuff i want to say hi to everybody else first yeah okay um, good ryan ryan whittle welcome back to the show such a delight uh can we hear you say something Sure. Thank you for having me back. Hey! Ah, oh, technology. Uh, we're so glad to have you back. How was your weekend? How are you? I'm good, thank you. I did a tour of southwestern Ontario for the Thanksgiving weekend, hmm. meaning I went to St. Catharines for a few days, then to my mom's house. She lives down near Windsor in Chatham, right in the middle, and then back up for today. Oh, wow. All the hits. All the great southern Ontario locales. <laughs> Ryan, do you, you like have to a call favorite? Uh, yes. <laughs> do you have a favorite yes. Golden Age musical? A favorite Golden or, Age uh, musical. movie musical specifically. Those are what we're looking at. Uh, so I guess The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, you say that with uncertainty. Just because I don't think I've ever seen, like, to be honest, I watch Singing in the Rain, but it's not my favorite. And it seems to be a lot of people's favorite, and I get it. There's lots of great moments, but as an overall story, it's pretty hard to beat the structure of The Wizard of Oz, in my humble opinion. You, you say that like it is not loud, lauded as one of the, <laughs> one of the greatest, greatest story structures of all time. Of all time. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, it is. <laughs> It is pretty perfect, but <laughs> um, so like why are, in my humble opinion, yeah. why, you know what? It's hard to top that. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But I appreciate people who tried. Oh, oh. we're gonna try tonight. We're gonna yeah. make the MGM musical sure. to top any and all musicals. Just you wait. Perfect. Um, and the sort of resident expert on all things musical, musical, movie musical, anything and everything. It's the wonderful Melissa Morris. Hey, Melissa, can we hear you? Hi. I yes, we can. With the microphone that's functioning. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, what's your favorite movie musical? That's a cruel question. It is. But I'm going to say, I'm going to give a shout out to An American in Paris. It's a good music. Uh, which is a, a good old fashioned uh, Gershwin musical with mm. amazing tunes a sick ass dream ballet at the end yeah. and some gene kelly uh moves mm. sweet moves so sure yeah is. american paris great answer fantastic great orchestrations answer. um and i mean just like gene kelly in general handsome guy this is the best looking he ever looks is in american in paris um fabulous um melissa tell us a little bit about you who, who are you <laughs> oh uh well i'm Pretty run-of-the-mill human. Um, I, uh, I'm an actor. I'm a singer. I'm um, an MD, and uh, I am doing some teaching, which is what Jackson was referring to. I'm teaching uh, some classes on musical theater at Queen's University at present, and uh, I'm just doing a deep dive right now. Um, so that's why I'm really happy we're 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 doing a an MGM musical theme this week. Fabulous. Um, I'm hoping that we can point to this story today. You could take it to class and say we we <laughs> nailed every <laughs> beat in the chart. I'd like I'd like today to be a. a they pinnacle, might not have been in order, but everyone <laughs> was there. All of them were there. Um, so that's my goal for today. Do you think we can do it? That's resounding silence. <laughs> I will take it. Noah. Hey. Hello. Good to Hi. see you. How are you today? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's your What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite MGM movie musical? Oh gosh. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I I don't think that my well of knowledge with it is large enough to say like I have a fa like. That's the thing. I I, I haven't do dove. I've so passive dive. Dove. Anyways, dove. All right. I don't think I've do uh, dove hard <laughs> enough into it. Um really say i have a favorite okay that's fair enough 
Um, so we'll just we'll just put you with Ryan and say Wizard of Oz. I I like Wizard of Oz, so I'll Done. take we that. We did it. We found one. Eric, I, I I don't think I actually asked you. No, Do you, you didn't. have a favorite? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's not the best one. I'm not saying that. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm not. I'm not saying this is the best movie musical. But I really like Peter O'Toole in Man of La Mancha. Mm. I think that tiny, skinny, little Peter O'Toole acting his heart out, trying as hard as he can to be in this thing. And Sophia Loren is so feisty. And um, I really love that musical. I think it's a lot of fun. Mm. Um, so I would either say that one or as a cinematic achievement and making uh, and transferring the stage version to to really and fulfilling it i think fiddler on the roof is a really good movie musical as well yeah i think it's a really strong adaptation it's ambitious it's huge and i think it's really really good i think it's really well done so fabulous fabulous well as you can see so many incredible things that we now need to live up to and ideally surpass i cannot stress how much i would like this to be successful okay I believe you, Jack. I believe yeah, that to get you through want this, that. What do you, what's I your do, favorite I do. I really do. Music? What's your favorite? My, uh, well, that would have to be Sweeney Todd with... No, um, probably... <laughs> Gosh. Um, I, I know it's not perfect, but there's a lot of nostalgia tied to it. It's one of the first movie musicals that I saw, and that would be Singing in the Rain um, mm. with the wonderful Gene Kelly. Um, I remember being a wee lad. I probably had broken my arm or something, was holed up at home, and my mom was like, let's watch a movie. This was the first movie that I was allowed to see in theaters, and she put Singing in the Rain on. So it was delightful. It was a fun movie. Um, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, there cool. we go. I'll drink to gonna, that, and yeah. we'll also drink... Well we done. did it. So as ever, as the all right, let's race through this because we've taken Go a lot of it. time yeah, in the intro. Time. So today for our drinking game, just in case you want to drink along at home, we are going to drink. As you will see in the text, the the theme of tonight is we're missing something, but we don't know what it is. So um, anytime someone doesn't know what they're missing, so let's try and spot when we don't know what we're missing, and mm. uh, and <laughs> hopefully you don't know when it's and miss it. Noah's going to hide stuff in the art. He's going to hide music notes in the art. It's going to be great. Um, don't, so yeah, take note. I'll be taking don't, note. Don't yeah. miss your entrance. That's oh, Lord. nailed it. That's okay. <laughs> Achieved. Also, you know, going, I really trusted you guys with that one. And uh... Also, if you want, we're going to, you can make us, uh, we're, we're going to try and incorporate some, and we're mem- remembering off the top of the show this time, everyone. We're going to try and incorporate some, uh, what are they called? Dr- literary devices. I yeah, just rolled literary devices. I just rolled a 13, which means our first one is onomatopoeia. We're going to oh, onomatopoeia, okay. nice and easy to start. Oh, We're everyone gonna knows what that is. Incorporate some onomatopoeia like that. Right. Zap. All right, we're good to go, Jack. Pow. Amazing. Shall we dive into this world-changing, earth-shattering musical? Yeah. Starring right. Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire. Oh man. Okay. Let me let me play you in, Ryan, and, and then give us some narration. Uh, one second. Hell's Kitchen is a magical, fantastical district of Manhattan where the forces of good and evil battle for the souls of mankind. Many angels and demons use Hell's Kitchen as their playground, tempting and redeeming souls all over the Big Apple. Though sometimes an archangel slash devil needs to get away from the eternal struggle. There is no better place to relax than the Music Box, a local tavern owned by a little man named Virgil. It has singing, dancing, and a strictly no-apocalypse policy. 
you as the bartender at the music box have to try to keep the patrons happy and under control. When someone is intoxicated, they are asked to leave. If someone is drunk and belligerent, they are escorted out by the bouncer. If someone is stupid enough to cause a scene, they are thrown out. You also try to keep the peace between the demons, demons and the angels. Now you have a regular patron named Ben. He's a pretty nice guy. He comes to the bar every day after work. He drinks his share of beer and spends time talking to the other regulars. On one particular day, a new customer came in. He was a massive looking guy with a giant beard and scary eyes, a demon. He ordered a beer and seemed to be thinking. He was staring off into space. Are you okay? You asked him. He looked up at you and nodded. Uh-huh. I'm waiting for someone. His name's Greg. Oh, I see. Well, if you need anything, just let me know. Thanks. He said. You continued cleaning glasses and waiting until it was time to close. Hey, Ben. Said the demon. Hey, Mike. Said Ben. How's Hell's Kitchen treating you? I don't know. Answered Mike. It sucks. I missed the last train and it's late. I feel like I'm going to miss something. Well, that's silly. You've always made it here before. Yeah. Side Sometimes Mike. I miss things that I shouldn't. What are you missing? Asked Ben. Mike, the demon, begins to sing. <laughs> All right, you ready? Heaven knows, heaven knows the things I'm missing out on. I long, I pine, I yearn the time for tears is over. All the love that I left behind. Longing to feel again. All the games we to play all the joy and pain all the laughter all the joy never knew what I had but hell knows what I'm missing all the angels and demons around the bar begin to pine about the things they miss that I never take again All those young wild romances All those hugs and kisses All those chances that I took that I would never have again But hell knows what I'm missing all the creatures in the bar begin laughing. <laughs> oh, I love this song. Oh. The years go by, I cry. The years go by, I weep. But I'm not giving up on all the things I missed. But hell knows. What I'm missing out. Ben, who's had too much to drink, starts to dance. Ben, you can't do that on the table. I, uh, oh, oh, I'll I be damned go. if I let this pass. And I know, I know what I need to do. I gotta make it right. I gotta make it right this time. I better, I better, I better be ready. Cause you know what, what I've been through, I've been to hell and back. Mike snaps his fingers and Ben falls over. 
Beautiful. You spend the next hour listening to the song. Once they get started, nothing on earth can stop them. Alice comes to cover your shift for a moment so you can have a break, and you slip away to the back alley. You sing. All the days that I should have lived All the laughs that we should have shared All the moments that I never even knew But yes, I know what I missed. You feel a hand on your shoulder. You turn around and it's... We're hit and enter. It's... Oh, is it? Who could it be? Suspense is killing me. AI. It's, the suspense is, it's honestly unbelievable. This is, uh, they've made a really bold claim when they made this yeah. movie. Anytime a reveal, the camera would turn really <laughs> slowly. We'd see their shadow. We'd yeah. see a slight outline. We see their silhouette now, but the lights haven't come up on them yet. So we, we don't know who it is. They touch on the shoulder and then we pan up the arm. We see every fiber in the suit. <laughs> exactly what they're wearing. But even that, we can't quite make out because it hasn't told us yet. Um, it is still loading. God. Uh -oh. um, I'll try hitting enter again. Okay. I already refreshed. Come on, AI. I left it here because I thought it would be fun. Um, but if you're not going to give me anything, then it isn't fun, AI. There we go. If this was to air on TV, this would be a perfect commercial break. <laughs> what are we selling today? All right, we've got some text. Oh, thank God. Hey, Melissa, are you able to see the new text that's there? Oh, no. Black. Yeah, you might have to refresh then. Yeah. Okay. Oh, in the meantime, I'm going to take a minute then to... Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well. Uh, I'm going to open up the world info because I have a new character to punch in. I should have done this earlier. I did not notice it. Who do we have One now? Moment. Kent Stockford. So just so uh, we can get Melissa up to speed, the chat can at any time redeem points to insert a new character into the story they'll be in sort of the the ai's memory they might not come up um but in just in case they do i'm gonna have the ai generate who they are right now we've been given the name kent stockford and here's what the ai has come up with kent stockford is a mute tap dancer from dallas texas <laughs> he's super impatient but reliable and knows his way around the wrench his best friends are rob and doug that's that's it that's who he is so a, a, a mute tap dancing mechanic <laughs> fabulous um melissa are you able to see the new text now uh yes i i can amazing why don't you take it away You feel a hand on your shoulder, you turn around, and it's... You've changed. What? You don't look as bored and tired as you were before. Well, you showed up. You know me. I always show up. So why did you come? I didn't. He smiled. It is Lucifer. Ugh. You say... What do you want, Lou? Do you have more? Try refreshing. There is more. Technology. Technology. It's okay. These these films were always paced so slowly. <laughs> always had weird pauses and strange places that didn't quite make sense. Oh, sorry. I um yes, but I is that my character or is that Virgil? I so Virgil says, "What do you want, Lou?" And then you say, 
It's a surprise. I'm not in the mood for surprises. Just come with me. <sighs> you sigh and follow him. You, as the bartender at the music box, have to try to keep the patrons happy and under control. A demon. He ordered a beer and seemed to be thinking. He was staring off into space. I think that this is a good time for Lucifer to sing. I've also, oh. chat, so you know, our, yes. our professor, Demetrius, Melissa, has offered us a list of commonly used songs and musicals. I have rolled on the list, and guess what I got for Lucifer? What did you get for Lucifer? He is going to sing an ally song, a song Ooh. professing his allyship. Are we in a deal with the devil? It appears oh. like we may be. Um, do we even know what we're missing, or should we take a drink? Um, <laughs> King of Autumn. I want to find out. King of Autumn says Frank Sinatra is Lucifer. Mm. <laughs> casting. Yeah, that's good casting. Um, Melissa, can you give us a, a good Frank Sinatra tune? Um, all right. Side. We're gonna call it. The title is what Lucifer wants. Lucifer gets, or what Lou wants. <laughs> what Lou wants. What Lulu wants. Lulu gets. Is there? Is, are there lyrics yet? Or no, I am making them now. I see. Okay. Um. So what? What does an ally song mean typically? What? What should we look at? No, any of like. It's those secondary characters, the friends, the teachers, the, uh, well, not the mentors, really, but the, you know, the people who are helping that hero on the quest. So, huh. all those sidekicks, the big group numbers where everyone's trying to help the hero to achieve the goal. Okay. Interesting that our secondary supporting character is the devil. I'm into it. And it's uh, Ryan, was that a hand that I saw? Yeah, because I can't see anybody. I was going to oh. offer, like in The Wizard of Oz, the ally songs could be, we're off to see the wizard when it's sung, and they do their parts, the scarecrow, the tin man, and the the lion, when they join in to like, well, yeah, let's go. We'll help, we'll help. you get there. Okay. I didn't realize this was like an entire subsect of song. Um, interesting. Yeah, so we, we've got some text coming up. I've got a verse and a chorus. I think um, we'll trade off in the verse one, Melissa. You'll start, I'll take okay. the second line, so, so on and so forth. Then you take okay. the whole chorus. And I've got a verse two coming in. And I think we'll do the same thing for that. Just let me do a chorus again. And then uh, maybe we can stop in the middle for the bridge if we feel like it. All right. Jack set us a theme. All right, Melissa, take it away whenever you're ready. Okay. Isn't she beautiful? What? That woman. That woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's really pretty. What are you talking about? She's stunning. I could look at her forever. You couldn't. Why not? All the men would give anything to have her smile oil. All the women know they're lucky to have her. But it's me who gets to have her. Do you ever get sick of looking at her? What? The angel. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I guess so, but it's only because it's an angel. You got that right. So how can you be so sure? I just am. All the men wouldn't know what they found. All the women have been through what I've had 
but it's me who gets to love her. <sighs> Are we going to be doing this all night? Of course. We're on a date. Let's do bridge. Who sings the bridge in the bar? In, in the bar? What? What's the chorus? The chorus is sung Ooh. by. Um, or, or the bridge you, is sung by. Uh, is, do you have like a, a cook or something in the back? Uh, let's say the um small knickknacks. On the wall, come oh, okay. alive. Oh, I was expecting that. <laughs> and sing. The bridge, and they say. Oh, here Is we that go. I, I think we're we're gonna say that. Do you want to take it, or do you want to trade the knickknacks on the wall? You do I think one Ryan line. Ryan should take it. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, knickknack us up. All right, knickknack. <laughs> Jesus. All the eyes that have been treated to her beauty, all the ears that have heard her angelic voice, but it's me. Who's got her? You take the first line. How do you figure you're in love with her? I don't know. I don't know. I just am. We'll say a final chorus. Give me one moment. <laughs> uh, I accidentally hit the uh, button. I just need to make it sure it's saying do the story again. All right. All right, and Virgil sings. It was a bold choice to really make him think about it a long time. All the times that we've been apart All the mistakes that I've made All the regrets that I'll never have But there's place where two can walk If we stay, if we hold hands It's sure to bring happiness to me Oh, happiness to me. You realize you're no longer in the alleyway and that you're in the alley behind the sound of music. What the hell is going on? This is my favorite spot. For what? The view. He looks That's around great, and smiles. It? It's great, isn't it? Are we behind the set of the show, The Sound of Music? I think it's another bar called The Sound. We have the music box <laughs> and have... the sound. <laughs> <laughs> it's rival bar nearby is The Sound of Music. Incredible. Um, I think our he's introducing us to our love interest. Now, on Thursday, ah. we came up with a singular angel and demon to be seated in this world. Um, and I think we see the angel that we've got a thing for. Um, don't hate us too much, uh, Ryan, Melissa, and Noah. Her name is Miss Divine. It's French. Oh, classic. Here we go. Cute little classic meat cute. 
You look down the alley and see the angel Miss Divine trip and drop her purse. She scrambles and picks it up. She turns back to you. Uh, are, are you okay? Yeah, thanks. I... <laughs> she walks back to her car and drives off. Oh, f- You stand there. <laughs> you stand there for a second thinking about what just happened. What the? What's going to happen, AI? I just I don't know. It. Where are you going to take you this know, one? Man, I don't know what I'm missing right now. I'm going to take <laughs> a drink. I, too, will take a drink. <laughs> Our signature catchphrase. You turn around, and there's the demon. You jump back. <sighs> what the hell? Hello again. You gasp. What the hell are you doing here? Told you. I'm not your type. I don't care what your type is. Get get out. Um what all right. We've established Lucifer is our ally. He's trying to get us to hook up with Miss Divine, but we can also assume that it's probably for nefarious reasons because it's, you know, Lucifer. Um <laughs> yeah. but that's neither here nor there. Um <laughs> Melissa, what does Lucifer say? We'd we'd say, get out. You know, we don't. I'm just an awkward man named Virgil who owns a bar, and I don't take chances. Get out of my life, <laughs> devil! And you say to him to get the girl. You say, uh, suck it up. What's the you command? Got you, this. you got this. You got this. Wow. Um, I'm going to add one thing. Suck it up. You got this. She yours if you want to go after her. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Then no. why did you come here? I, I, uh, I was just thinking. Thinking about what? About stuff. Stuff? That's what I said. So, um, what kind of stuff? You know, stuff. Uh-huh. I think Lucifer's got, got a beat on you right now. I think we have another sta- song, and it is going to be um, 17. All right. That's 11 o'clock number. It's a <laughs> <And> dream <laughs> ballet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to say with a little bit of singing as um, the world... <laughs> Uh, uh, a fog rolls in. Oh yeah. Fog rolls in, and you both uh, dance the song. Um, and the song is called. The stuff that gets in the way. <laughs> Okay. All right, AI. Give me a dream ballet. Melissa, describe a dream ballet for those who are uninitiated. So a dream ballet is generally when the characters fall asleep and they go into another world, uh, a dream world where they can live out their real dreams or their nightmares or where stuff gets a little bit fantastical. Usually Mm -hmm. there's no singing. It's usually just dance because in musical theater, dance is the highest form of, of, of emotion, of, of emoting, of expression. So, Mm. uh, but today we're gonna, we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing this dream ballet, but as kind of our dream alter egos. Could we, could we actually get Ryan to like monologue them and we'll just imagine that that's how we're being expressed through dance? <laughs> yes. Luckily, I've been working on some intense uh, choreography that I'll be able to perfectly display. All right, here we go. Uh, 
The stuff that gets in the way. Every mistake that you make. Regret that you're holding on to. All the things that you regret. That's the stuff that it gets in the way. And you finish the lyrics and you look up. You notice the beautiful woman from earlier. The one with the dark hair standing in the seating area. You begin the pot of day. <laughs> Each step that she takes. Each look that she gives. All the things that you miss. That's the piece of someone else. You tell her. You'll buy her a drink. She tells you she's waiting for a friend. Will your friend... I think... I Will mean, your friend be long? You want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> take it, Eric. You ask through dance. <laughs> Will your friend be long? No, I don't think so. Then why aren't you at the bar? I'm waiting. For what? To see her friend. You sigh. Look, uh, it's been fun. I'll let you be alone. Wait. Yes? What's your name? I just hit enter. I should have just said what her name is. The AI. <laughs> <laughs> the AI should know. It'll be like Maggie or something. Well, it could be Miss Divine. We don't know her first name. Isabella Divine. <laughs> <laughs> And she, yes, she is. She is both <laughs> Bell and Divine. <laughs> Isabella. Well, Isabella, don't wait too long. You don't want to be left out, do you? <laughs> she chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. She leaves. You shake your head. <sighs> what was that? Nothing. What was that? Nothing. Wait, Eric, did you say nothing? Yeah, I said nothing. Nothing. Oh, okay. oh, oh shit. Come on, tell me. I'm assuming this is the dream sequence has ended. The, I think, the yeah. fog has passed. We've now returned to the it's, dingy alley behind this bar. It's clearing out. We realize it was just mist from the grates in the sewers. <laughs> right? Oh, just sewer mist. Yeah, classic. <laughs> it was the most amazing moment of my life. Wow. That didn't sound too convincing. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> what was it then? You being you. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. See you soon. Mm. Mm. Commercial break. <laughs> Ryan, give us a commercial break. What are you selling? Uh, today I am selling Excel Mints. Okay. They come in this little tin. And they're imported... From Wrigley, Canada, Toronto, Ontario. And warning, cat may pose a choking hazard. The cat may pose, or the cap. The cap may pose a choking hazard. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, Ryan. You're not really selling this these mints to me. You know what, Jack? If I've never had them, I don't know what I'm missing. <laughs> hey! That's, sure, it's an excuse to drink. I need it. Oh, Lord. Okay, um, we've got some more. Ryan, take us back in. Okay. I'm just gonna hit refresh. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so 
Sorry, there was so many portamentos. I forgot that this uh, this cello VST, it's a relatively new one that I picked up. If I press really softly, I get like a nice slide between notes. But then if I do it too often, the music just sounds like... <laughs> it's a sad, drunken More like cellist. a part of don't do. Hey! Don't do. Yeah. yeah. That's, it. that's why we have you around. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like a Looney Tunes cartoon. You know, like when Wiley Coyote gets, he gets like smushed down, then he comes up and he's like. A... I feel like that image exemplifies the main character of this story. How so? <laughs> a crush <laughs> Wiley Coyote. He constantly runs into walls <laughs> and then flaccidly <laughs> floats to the <laughs> He's squished by everything. Everyone walks all over him. Yeah. Poor Fred Astaire. All right, let's keep going. I'm so jazzed at how well it did a dream ballet, Jack. <laughs> the pas de deux. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I put the up. Oh, I put man. I put pas de deux, and then it oh, it did the steps. It read it. It knew. It knew, Jack. Ah, what a delight. Anyway, let's keep going. I'm excited. Lucifer leaves, and you are left alone in the street. You gather your things. Time to work. You walk through the misty streets and into the music box. Good evening, everyone. You greet the customers. You pour some drinks. You seat a couple. You tell the man, Thank you for the kind words. I'm flattered. <laughs> I'm going to say he insists. I want to see what the AI said. No, 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 I mean it. You're the best. You're always so nice. Thanks. You smile. Thanks, I try. He winks. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, bud. He goes to the bathroom and you continue waiting on his table. You hear laughter coming from the bathroom. <laughs> that sounds like a song. Does it, Eric? <laughs> yeah. Song. All right. Give and us what, a roll. And what kind of song is it? It uh we'll find out. It's, uh, it's the uh Oh my god, it's the grand. I hit the 20, Jack. Oh no. <laughs> this is the finale? It's the grand finale of Act One. <laughs> um, laughter in the bathroom. I just realized, yeah, I was going to call it laughter in the bla bathroom, but um, mm -hmm. I just realized um, we haven't had any automatopoeia yet, so the title will be oh. Sploosh. It's laughter from the bathroom. <laughs> this is, oh man. Okay. All right, sure. <laughs> Sploosh, laughter from the bathroom. It's laughter in the bathroom. <laughs> it's laughter in the bathroom. Speaking of which, as well, for the second act, King, uh, Mysterious P has asked that we change the literary device. All right, well, I'm glad I did it once. <laughs> so I'm glad we have Sploosh to kick things off. <laughs> Title of my autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> While well, he's typing this out, Melissa, on a scale of, of 1 to 10... How do you think we're doing in terms of MGM movie musical? Well, I mean, you know, uh -huh. we don't yeah. have a sound stage and we don't have like a huge cast. So because of those, you know, and we don't have Gene Kelly. But other than that, sure, I think sure. we're doing great. Okay, so like in this situation, we're in the writer's room. We're kicking ideas around. We're putting the draft together. How's this as a draft, you know, to, to give to Mr. Kelly? Yeah, it's work. It's a it's a work in progress. Okay. Um, it's a, <laughs> very, a very much first draft. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'll take it. I'll do you have a favorite song thus far? Uh, I I did like our Dream Ballet. I must say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit early than uh than it's typically put. Where would you typically put your Dream Ballet? You know, somewhere in Act Two. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Are you so sure we, you we didn't want to do it ha halfway through Act One? Are you sure? You sure it can't exist there? <laughs> oh. oh, sorry about that. The drummer got very disappointed. Okay. Um, we have a new literary device. Okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, so the new literary device we're going to try and put in is Anti-Metabol, 
which is a rhetoric. Anti-metabol. Yeah, anti-metabol is the repetition of words and successive clauses, but in a transposed order. So, for example, I know what I like, and I like what I know, right? Oh, okay. So I'm going to put it in our chorus here. Is a cor- chorus is going to scla- uh, start with uh, sploosh, and we laugh, laugh, and we sploosh. <laughs> Huh. I hope your mom's not watching too closely. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, fine. It's fine. Um, my mother and my father just got back from a trip overseas. They went on a lovely cruise, and my mother had gone on a bicycle ride in Amsterdam, fallen down, and broke her clavicle. So I hope right now she's resting mm. and not laughing her you know, face off at this incredible musical that would ha- surely just bruise a rib or two a real real rib bruiser it i need to win the oscar eric my <laughs> life is nearly ruined all right jack uh can you give us the grand finale in I, can we make this inspired by polka music it was one of those <laughs> great great uh you know mid europe inspired they were fascinated uh-huh. with- yeah. Can you remind me what polka sounds like for a sec? And there's accordion usually? Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. pretty hyper. I, do I have? Uh, and sorry, what? I said it's pretty hyper. You pretty know, it's like hyper. It's pretty hyperactive. Yeah. It, it uh, moves. Okay. To say it the moves, least. huh? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. This is it. <laughs> A pair of eyes are looking back at you. Two of smiles are peeking through. It's a pair of girls who are laughing at you. Um, I had the next one going, but it didn't work, and I refreshed, and it went away. So just give me one moment. <laughs> what an obnoxious form of music. <laughs> Jack, this is your people. It's the <laughs> I refuse. All right, here it should be working. Sploosh and we laugh. Laugh and we sploosh. Sorry about that. Hey, no problem. <laughs> I don't see any of this. I'm sorry. I got to do a quick refresh here. I don't know what the structure is. Um, all right, Polka continues to vamp. Okay, take it away. Uh, I'm not sure who says sorry about that. Is that you, Virgil? Um, let, let, let's say that it, these, these are the rich businessmen from Germany who oh, are great. in the bar. <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry about that. Hey, no problem. What are they doing in there? Just laughing. They were laughing a lot. They're probably just having a good old time. Maybe. A crack of the mirror is heard. The tap of a brush is fell. A peek through the crack is hard. A glimpse into a mirror. Everybody. <laughs> oh, not <laughs> everyone. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sploosh, we laugh, we laugh, we sploosh. sploosh. <laughs> they disappear. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they saw us? <laughs> I I doubt it. They were looking at you funny. I don't care. You sure about that? I said I don't care. Okay. (laughs) 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 Took a very very meta turn for a second. Uh, broken. Water <laughs> is everywhere. Oh. Everywhere. No. It will take all night to clean up. Uh, 
Oh, we went from the best moment of our life where we actually got up the courage to talk to a girl and then the bathroom got trashed. <laughs> what a tragedy. You stand in the bathroom and it is ruined. The mirrors are broken, water is everywhere. It will take all night to clean up. You shrug it off and get back to work. Anything else? Oh, thanks. You head back towards the bar. Hello there, boys. You notice two gentlemen wearing black suits at the table in the corner. One says, Can I help you with something? I'm going to say usually that's my line because I'm the bartender. Ah. And who are these people? I feel like they're here to institute some sort of yeah. wrinkle in our plot. Maybe they're people looking for Miss Divine. Well, this is the hook that are going to get us back for Act 2, right? Ah, this here is we go. like the, yeah. Because we've had our finale. <laughs> the grand finale. <laughs> who can forget it? Splution we, <laughs> Splution we laugh. We laugh. Um. Usually that's my line. Ah, usually that's my line. Who are you two? We're investigators. I see. What do you want with me? You were seen in a church yesterday, 12 p.m. Well, I was. Yes, you were. And you spoke to an angel. You asked if you could stay with her. What, what of it? I'm just hit enter. She's in ties with the mob. Isabella Divine. No. Oh no, <laughs> Miss Divine. No. She said no. What do you expect? What do you mean? I asked her out on a date. She said no. So what? You did? You and her? What? <laughs> of course not. Oh. Well, anyway, she's ain't supposed to date mortals. Uh-oh. Well, good. Uh, I'm going to say... Uh, well, good. Because she ain't dating me. That's not what I was implying. Then what are you insinuating? Nothing. Nothing at all. The hell it isn't. We'll see you around. Bye. Bye. Maybe next time. Don't hold your breath. I'm just going to hit enter. Fabulous. So, are they part of the Angel Mafia? Is that what yeah, we're saying? Yeah, I think it's the Angelic Hitmen. And... Oh, no! The Seraphs. Oh, God. Let's oh, just... they we, let's... <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> let's just go... Um, <laughs> what was that? They leave... Uh, they make a mark of... What do angels do to mark a uh, place as as dangerous? Um, gosh, like a symbol on the door or something? You mean? Yeah, or something. Or yeah, um, um, put a big flaming sword out front. We're gonna say a mark of Solomon on the door. What is a mark of Solomon? I don't know, but they made it up for this movie, Jack. And <laughs> it sure was iconic. I oh, remember man. the first time I saw the mark of Solomon, and I thought, geez, wouldn't, <laughs> w wouldn't want that on my door. I want to shout out Noah's angelic hitman here with the hats and the tiny halos. <laughs> Uh, and Noah, I, I need you to draw me the Mark of Solomon, and it needs to be iconic. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yep, you're right. 
Uh, I've got it. It's. I mean, I can picture it clear as day, of course. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> right. As they leave, they make the mark of Solomon on the door. You wonder if this is going to cause any trouble. The two men leave. The bar is quiet. Not much to do. Just sit and wait. You smile. You think about the movie. You hum. You try not to listen to the two men. They might be back. You try to stay cheerful. Act mm. one. End of act one. We have a redeem of a character, Jack. Oh, do we? Mark Solomon. It. <laughs> um, it wasn't actually redeemed. Oh, okay. It was just sort of put in here. Yeah. Well, Should I punch it in anyways? No, Who's Mark Solomon? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Funny. Um, as an act break then, I've prepared a, a little trivia game so we can take a minute, we can breathe, um, and think a little bit more about musicals. Let me just pull it up here. So, game is relatively simple. I feel like I feel like you guys uh, know your musicals well enough. So, what I've got here is a couple of strange ones that maybe I, I, I at least haven't heard of. I'm going to see if maybe you have. I'm going to give you the title, give you the year it was released, and the writers of these forgotten movie musicals. Um, not, sorry, these forgotten stage musicals. You tell me your best guess as to what the plot is, and the closer you get, the more points you get. Bonus points if you can name a song. <laughs> you guys ready to go? I are we? So. Are we all on the same team? No, everyone's going to be vying for points. Oh, okay. And okay. The, the winner gets a, a virtual high five. Wow. I'm going to begin with number one. Roger and Hart's By Jupiter from 1942. It starred Ray Bolger, it turns out. By Who can tell me their best approximation of what By Jupiter was about? Um, It was... Oh, it was... Was this the Caesar and Mark Antony? And... um. Not Caesar and Mark Antony specifically that I know of. Um, was was it about Caesar taking over Rome? It was it was to do with Rome. I know that, right? And um, kind of. Yeah. Uh, well, what's weird is it, it was a historical it is biopic by Jupiter. It was, no, no, right? no, no, definitely not. No. Okay. This is yeah, most definitely not historical. Oh. Um. God, I know. I looked this up once. I remember. I remember this name so well. Yeah. Um, anyone else can buzz in or, or call out if you've got an idea. I remember there's like a a, a song like a yeah. I think there's like a, a like an ingenue song or something that yeah that is fa famous from the show, but I, I don't know. I, I got nothing. Um, can I can, do you give, a hint. Some give a hint? The, give a hint. Give a hint. Roles. Yeah. Um. So, um, Ray Bolger played Sapiens. <laughs> Uh, Bene Venuta played Hippolyta, Hippo, yeah. um, and Constance Moore played Antiope. <laughs> um, Theseus was in this. It was Ronald Graham, and Achilles was in this, played by Bob Douglas. It's it's not historical by any means. By any means, it, or it's, so it's mythos then. Um, mythos, yeah, led by Theseus and Hercules are both in this. So is it is it the story of Theseus's ship and the Golden Fleece? It's not. Ryan, do you want to give it a shot? No. <laughs> Can you give us a song title from it? Sure. Um, here, though, the, the two songs that at least have Wikipedia pages named after them are Everything I've Got and Wait Till You See Her. If either of those are remotely well, familiar. Fucked if I know. Jesus. Yeah, man. Well, you know what? This I've learned a, I don't oh, know man. what I'm missing. I'm taking a drink. <laughs> Um, all right. I'm going to say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the point. I get the point for this one. Jack gets the uh, point. Here's what it's about. An army of Greek warriors arrive in the territory of the Amazons, hoping to steal the sacred girdle of Diana. A land ruled by women is so shocking to the men that they're captured. Uh, everything ends up getting along in the end. It's a weird little show that was popular in the 40s. Um, and yeah, it was um, the last show that Rogers and Hart did together um, before they broke up and then following Hart's death. And then he went on to collaborate with Oscar Hammerstein, which is probably the most you know, remarkable thing about this show. Wow. 
Yeah. I know I looked it up one. once. I'm sad I forgot it all. No, it's okay. I, I've never heard any music from it, even the ones that are supposedly important. Isn't and... it, is there not a jazz standard from it that's actually like a thing? Uh, can I just rattle out off yeah. the names and you just tell me? Okay. For Jupiter in Greece, the Amazons, Jupiter forbid, life with father, nobody's heart belongs to me, the gateway of the temple of Minerva, life with father reprise, here's a hand, no mother no is your end of act one finale. Um, act two has the boy I left behind me. That sounds ingenue. Uh, maybe. Um, everything I've got, bottoms up, careless rhapsody. Uh, Fina Leto, everything I've got reprised. Wait till you see her. Now that I've got my strength and finale. Oh, finale. Any of those, uh, <laughs> any of those ringing bells? Finale, nah. finale. It's what happens uh, at the end. At the finale, end. Finale, yeah, everyone finale. knows that one. Now we can go home. Yeah, classic. Truly remarkable. Okay, go on to Here's the next one. Two. Yeah, I'm going to. Robert Wright and George Forrest's Song of Norway from 1944. Anybody know this one? It's an operetta. It's an what operetta. Is it about? I know it's an yeah. operetta. Say again, um, sorry. Song of Norway. I'll tell you this. Neither Robert Wright or George Forrest are composers. The music is by someone else. By... Yeah, they lifted it. Yes. Mm. Oh, who could forget Fjords, Fjords, Gorge <laughs> of My Heart. Um. I'll say they lifted it from a classical music composer. A Norwegian like, classical music composer. Oh, I was like, is it Sibelius? But he's been let fin finished, isn't he? Ah, uh, common mistake. Yeah, mm. everyone gets Sibelius and this one mixed up. Uh, it's a biopic, quote unquote, of this person's life. Oh. A Norwegian biopic? Yeah. Harold yeah. Bluetooth. <laughs> no. Damn no, it. it's a biopic of, the, uh, of this composer whose music they lift and added music to. Um, Norwegian composers? Yeah. See, the problem um, is when composers are from Norway, they try and distance themselves from Norway. <laughs> and you'd be correct. Yeah. Um, let's see. What's a hint that I could give? Um, there's two particularly well-known quote-unquote songs, and that's The Song of Norway and Hill of Dreams. Are either of those uh, familiar to Those are to you? both as stupid as Fjord, Fjord, <laughs> 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 I will say that Song of Norway was well received on Broadway, playing for nearly two years. It was made into a movie in 1970. Spam a lot. <laughs> no. Um, music is. I, th I really thought these would be. Oh, man. I thought I, no, thought I had to dig God. deeper. Oh, God. Um, uh, unsurprisingly, the orchestrations for this show are better than the vocal lines. Beautiful orchestrations, very melodic. Why do you think we would know this? <laughs> uh, all right, who wrote the music for Per Gint? Oh, oh, oh. shit! It's um, the Song of the Mountain um, King. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Da, 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 da. This is the Hall of the Mountain King. We're singing this song. Uh, da, 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 da. We're on Broadway. Just going to make me more anxious every time oh it God, starts to speed me. up, and then I oh, don't know. Oh, uh, and that piano concerto, that famous piano concerto. concerto. Yeah, fuck. Yep, yep. Grieg, Grieg. Grieg is yes. the right answer, Edvard Grieg. Da, 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 the Song da, da, of da, da, Norway da, 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 da. is a little operetta following the life of Edvard Grieg using his own music. The music, oh. apparently, the lyrics were just like roughly thrown in there, and it was not nice to listen to, but it was popular enough because his music is good. So that is a point to Melissa. Well, I mean, it was a very scrape of the bottom of the barrel point. <laughs> it was, but it I'll was take a it. bottom of the barrel point, yes. Here's number three. Maybe you guys know this one. This is a Frank Lesser show. Where's Charlie from 1948? What's the question? <laughs> the show is called Where's Charlie? Yes. From 1948. What do we have to know? It's by no, you Frank gotta tell me Lasser. what it's about. What's it? What's it about, Eric? This is the third Charlie. question, and we don't know where he is. It's about wondering when he's gonna show up. <laughs> <laughs> it's waiting for Godot, but about a man named Charlie. Charlie yeah, it's the American right. version of waiting for Godot. How well do you think it was received? Piddlingly, mediocrely. It like most oh, okay. Lasser shows. It was better than it was given credit for. Fair enough. Okay, sure. Um, the same could not be said for this show. This show is apparently quite bad. <laughs> oh, really? That's what they all yeah. say. But yeah, um, that's fair. That's fair. You know, considering I'm a big Losser fan, and I actually I know of this show, but I never listened to it. <laughs> um, how about this? It's it's a farce. 
It's a Frank Losser show called Where's Charlie? Eric, what do you think your best estimation if you were to take a crack? It's, what do you think it's about? It's a farce. Yeah. Um, it's about a blind man trying to find his son in a large house. And boy, he gets up to a lot of shenanigans. It's two hours long and a musical. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Starring Where's Charlie? I can't see him. I'm blind. Where's okay. Charlie? Oh, he's so hard to find. And I trip <laughs> off the balcony. Ow, oh, boom, ding, bam. All those unforgettable Frank Lawson yeah. melodies. <laughs> yep. Just as he did. <laughs> Melissa, do you want to take a crack? What do you think Where's Charlie about? Does that have anything to do with Charlie's aunt? Yes. It does. It's an adaptation, okay. a musical adaptation of Charlie's Aunt. It is one for one, a musical adaptation of Charlie's Aunt. What's what, Charlie's what Aunt is, about? What is Charlie's Aunt? Uh, I don't actually know what Charlie's <laughs> Aunt is about. <laughs> Wait. Wait. I, Wait. So how do you know I, it's an adaptation cheating. of Charlie's Aunt? I feel like I must have read this in a, in a Wikipedia you know, in article. A you just Googled. just looked up. No, I'm sure that when I was researching musicals at some point, I learned mm -hmm. that it was a musical adaptation of Charlie's Aunt, and then that's as probably as far as I got because I don't. That's know That's about as far as you need to go. Yeah, I'll give you the other bottom of the barrel point for that one. Yeah. <laughs> so the year is 1892. And two Oxford University seniors are looking forward to an afternoon with their girlfriends. Everything goes awry when Charlie's aunt doesn't show up to be the chaperone. So to save the day, Charlie dresses up like his aunt. Everything goes smoothly until the girl's guardian falls in love with Charlie's aunt. And it's a musical farce based on the play Charlie's Aunt, loaded with mistaken identities and fun, upbeat Frank Lesser songs. It was poorly reviewed. Okay, okay. All right. Well done. It's, it's familiar. That's familiar. How about this one? Irving Berlin, 1949. The show is called Miss Liberty. What's Miss Liberty about? This one, I feel like if you just took a stab in the dark, you could well, maybe I guess Statue maybe of Liberty. It's like the statue. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say maybe but embodying. She's a lot. She comes to life or something. Something. Uh, uh, not quite, but it is definitely related to the Statue of Liberty. Um, the story of her creation. No, uh. the Statue of Liberty <laughs> exists in the show and is quite important. To the main character about climbing to the top of the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> uh, maybe in an emotional sense, but not literally. Um, it's actually a show of secretly about uh, George Eiffel, who did or Eiffel, who did the uh, interior work, the interior framework of, <laughs> the, Statue of, Liberty. of the Statue of Liberty. Is it no. about the one? Is it about someone who like wrote like the Star Spangled Banner, or is it about like George Cohen or something? Or uh, a, no, it about? is it is fictional. Fictional? Um, it's a fictional story. It's an alternate telling of the War of 1812 where the Statue of Liberty comes alive and thwacks the British so they don't end up burning down the light, uh, the White House. It's pretty rad, but no, unfortunately oh, not. Shit. <laughs> Ryan, do you want to give it a go? Is it about a pageant? A pageant? Um, no, no pageant. I will say that there is love involved. Love is pretty important. About a man who just loves big women. And there ain't no bigger than Miss Liberty herself. You're you're kind of getting close. No, I'm no, I'm not, Jack. I refuse to that. To you be. kind of are, pal. No. You kind of now think of it in a more wholesome American Irving Berlin way. Um, a man about, gazes uh, upon. Oh, okay, a Irving Statue Berlin. Of Maybe somebody goes to war. Is there war? There's always war with <laughs> There's Irving Berlin. There's no war. war. No. Um, no. We we beguile the Germans with the Statue of Liberty because she's just so damn pretty. The whole World War II was averted, and they All right. embraced hot dogs on the 4th of July. <laughs> is it about a man true? who meets a girl, but he doesn't know her name on the Statue of Liberty, and then she has she leaves without him knowing, and she's Miss no, Liberty? No, it's really oh, not. Is it, that, like, is it that like meet cute kind of thing, like that movie they did where they meet at the top of the tower type like thing? Sleepless in Seattle? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it was in Seattle. No, no, unfortunately not. Okay. Is it a man about to throw himself from the Statue of Liberty because he's so depressed and then he meets a no. lady? And What if I told you it's a man who looks upon the Statue of Liberty and falls in love and tries to go, it goes to Paris to try to find the woman who was the model for the Statue of Liberty, thinks he finds her, falls in love, but discovers it's not her, but they, they're in love anyways. Yikes. Yeah. It's like Apparently, vertigo beautiful. without the class. <laughs> <laughs> you're still really high up um apparently it has a breathtaking ensemble finale and it's called give me your tired you're poor because <laughs> of course that's where give me your tired you're poor is from 
Give me, you're tired, you're poor. I'm looking for a woman who was poor enough to model for a statue. <laughs> oh, no, been so that, obvious. Is, that is where give me your tired and porous. No, I think that the song is based on the poem, which yeah. was written in the 1800s. Yeah, but he wrote he wrote thing. the poem for this. He wrote the song for that show, or did he just use that? Oh, he adapted. He used the I, lyrics. He adapted. The poem. I know he yeah. used the lyrics, but it's just that's so silly. I don't think Irving Berlin know. wrote the thing that was on the statue. I got one more. Well, I'm writing an more? opening act song, Jack, and All right. it's going to put it to shame. <laughs> Great. Um, here's the last one. This is Sammy Fain's and E.Y. Harburg's Flahooly from 1951. What is Flahooly? <laughs> The, the world's first completely gibberish musical. <laughs> Sammy Fain's Flaholy from 1951. Any guesses? I need you to say all of those words again slower. Yeah, it's Sammy Fain and E.Y. Harburg's musical Flaholy from 1951. What is it? About? Are you Googling it right now? No, I am writing the prompt like a good host of a show does. The next <laughs> right. song. Um, okay. Um, Ryan, any idea what Flahooly is about? If you, This is an improv opportunity. <laughs> if you were to make something up, what do you think Flahooly is about? Thinking about it? <laughs> Working your way to the microphone. Oi. <laughs> yeah, that about sums it up. Yeah, all right. Mm, a Hawaiian term? <laughs> no. Unfortunately not. I feel like it's got to be something in the South. There's got to be, like, picnics and, and, and you know, maybe uh, something Southern. What if I told you it was fried, fried, fried chicken? <laughs> What if I told oh. you it was rife with anti-McCarthyist social commentary? Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, not the South. Oh. Not the South. It's a Any title ideas. again? Flahooly. F-L-A-H-O-O-L-E-Y. Is it is the the entirety of the show is actually just looking at McCarthy and just be like, you're full of Falooey. <laughs> Flahooly? Lahuli, I don't know. Look, Maybe. man, don't look at me like I'm supposed is to it, know the is word. Is is it um, is it about a bunch of like people getting arrested for nothing, for a bunch of fahuli? Ah, huh. uh, like a made-up, trumped-up charge is a fahuli. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, I'll give you the point. It's it's a, a quite convoluted musical, loosely about a toy maker, a doll, and a genie, with a not so splash of anti McCarthyism just thrown in there for good measure. Uh, Horborg used the musical to take a swing at the blacklisting that was happening in Hollywood. It featured the not so subtle song "You Too Can Be a Puppet," "You Too Can Be a Puppet," which was directed at McCarthy's followers. It contains the timeless lyric "Join the Brotherhood of Man." The Ten years would? before how to succeed in business. Are you the brother telling would, me the Frank Wasser just would. stole it? From this terrible musical about maybe McCarthyist Pinocchio? Who knows? <laughs> what even are musicals? Please. Honestly, because... after this excursion, I couldn't tell you. But um, that's been our game this evening. Hard to say that anyone is a winner today. Um, but from point standing alone, Melissa, I'm going to declare you our victor. Um, I will, I will take it, but I will give it back. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I didn't deserve that. No, I don't think any of us deserved anything that just happened in the last 25 minutes. How about this? Melissa, clear the bad taste from our mouth. Give us a recap of the story so far. Yeah, so there's a bartender. His name is Virgil, and he works in a bar. Okay. That bar is called the Music Box, and uh, he's got some patrons. They're all angels and demons, and um, he's got a bit of a, a sexual hankering towards 
Miss Ele Isabella Divine, an angel. Um, one of his best mates is Lucifer. Um, there's a couple other people at the bar, Mike and Ben. We seem to know very little about them. Um, we don't need to. It's okay. We don't need to. I guess they've died. Um, if demons can die. Hmm. Uh, a couple of investigators have shown up and called uh, our dear hero Virgil out on trying to date an angel and have warned him against that, doing that. And um, there was some splooshing in the bathroom. Yeah, what was that about? There was uh, a, a big act two finale. Yeah. Late Poker in number. act one. Um, about uh, some laughter, some splooshing, some destruction. And yeah, it was worth honestly, it. Uh, we spent a lot of time getting to know the bar and its patrons, how people interact with each other and the world of the bar. We got to meet our love interest, Miss Divine, that Lucifer's maybe pushing us towards a bit suspiciously. And as you mentioned as well, the celestial hitmen arriving, telling us to stay away from her. Uh, or no, that they're looking for her, right? Something along that line? Are they? Oh, they were, I think they're they just were... saying he, she can't date mortals. Ah, yeah. Um, I think I think they're looking for her because they saw or knew that you had a conversation with or about her at a church one time, and oh, that's how they get you. Um, and so they're trying to track her down and keep her uh, keep tabs on you at the same time. <clears throat> and that's our story so far. Um, truly, truly a, a musical for the ages with Fred Astaire in the lead, just gracefully dancing his way into our hearts with this. Wonderful dream ballet. Chad is arguing if it's Fred Astaire or Paul Rubens as the lead. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that, Noah? I, I that's what I feel. I. Right. Do Ryan, have, have we found a music a, oh, note yet? Oh my God! No, I see a bass clef. There's a bass clef over here. Wait, where's the bass clef? Jack in, in the what? in the in the score. Oh, there it is, Jack. <laughs> I didn't even see it. I was looking. I'm sorry, everywhere Jack. But I there. think I know that we need to teach you a little bit about music one day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. I've been having a really hard time keeping track of anything just, music just, related. Um, remedial courses. For <laughs> I see a <laughs> quarter. Is I see evening. a quarter rest in the broken mirror. I don't know if it's intentional. If it's as well, if it's I'll intentional. Admit, that one was less intentional, but. <laughs> It yeah. ended up being there by accident, so... Nice. I I thought I saw Trouble Clap a couple of drawings ago, but... There I was. Didn't, I didn't know how to say it or what I was oh, supposed to do about you that. You just so shout it just, out. Just shout it out. Just, just be like, hey, it's here. If everyone would like to see it. Well, I have oh, a new yeah. martini, so I'm going to take a retroactive drink. Love it. Um, Ryan, would you... Oh, there, there it is. is. Oh, my God. It's right there. What else is it supposed to be? I like the New Yorker arms. They're almost Trouble Clefs. Yeah, uh, it's supposed to be smoke coming out of the back of a car that ah, Divine drove away the in. The car, very nice. Isabella's car. All right, we should get on to number uh, act two because it's yeah, let's do it. Oh my god! All right, All musicals. Right. Everybody, let's go. We've got an act two opening number, and boy, do I like it. Oh, oh no. no! All right. I don't know if I like it. We'll see if I oh, like you it. You really backpedaled on that one really fast. I want this to be a Fred Astaire um, smooth, but still kind of anxious because he's Fred Astaire number, Jack. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Sure. Sounds good. I'll you just, I'll start spend all right. You spend all night cleaning up the bathroom and finally get to pass out at two a.m. You wake up the next morning with a headache. You stumble to the bathroom and see two small horns growing on your head. Act two, opening number, waking up horny in the morning. God <laughs> fucking damn it. Uh, I just need to apologize because I got kicked out of what? the program and oh, no. I just need to log back in. So, you know. Oh, that's okay. okay. To you Zoom? Time. To it's Zoom? The... Yeah. To, to, to AI Dungeon? Uh, AI Dungeon, yeah. All right. Well, you've got a number to do because I guess this one's all me. All right. Let's start, Jim. Great. Oh, 
sorry, I can't get the strings to go away. <laughs> <laughs> A new day arise, the day when love is in the air. You rise up out of bed with a feeling you take a peep through your blinds onto the street. There are horns on my head. I'm in heaven, but I'm not dead. But it sure feels that way. You take another look, the wings on your back, your glow, the horns on your head. You still can't believe it, the whole world is turning round, but you can't help but grin. In love with an angel, but a demon. In a heavenly city, a place of sin where no one dies. It's not a good combo, it just makes you sore. You can't stop inside, the demon inside. No heaven, no hell, just lust. Oh. You put on a hat and head to work. When you get there, you notice the sign of Solomon is glowing. I'm a demon. And she's an angel. But it's a shame. That will never change. She loves me. And I love her. But it's not right, I just can't help it. It's our nature, we couldn't fight it. If we tried pouring drinks. You gotta pour a drink for a customer, but you spill it everywhere. What the hell? the sign what about it Ooh, there we go how goes the uh, how goes the rejoin Melissa have you managed it oh no we can't hear you <laughs> no keep talking uh how about now oh there you are hey welcome back all right Hi, are you back, back in the game She's back. Welcome back. Thanks. All right. Have you, are you? You're in the text, Melissa. Yeah, uh, I'm a. I'm a customer. Is that where I? Yeah. Am? Let's start okay. from what the hell. We've just spilled a drink, um, and I say, what the hell? The sign. What about it? The sign of Solomon. You in trouble with Gabriel Six? It'll take more than a sign to scare me. Really? You say that as if you weren't scared. I'm not. I can handle this. I'd just like to know why. The customer's right. You better start explain. Oh, shit. That's someone else, I assume. Awesome. The customer is right. You better start explaining. You're all lucky. I was just about to pulverize some beer mugs. I'm going <laughs> to Shit. We start to explain. Because we're... <laughs> We're cleaning and we're explaining to the bar. To clean some mugs and explain your predicament. Where's King of Autumn has redeemed change the literary device when you get a minute as well. Change the literary device? We've got number eight. The literary device, and I think this might be a good time for a song. The literary device now becomes... 
Oh, uh, give me two seconds. I'm about to find it. It's yeah, not hyperbole. Right. It's juxtaposition. Hey. Oh, perfect. Do I need to explain that, or do people know what juxtaposition is? I feel like we know what juxtaposition is. Yeah, it's where you take two opposing things and you put them in contrast to each other to really emphasize what one and the other How is. Different. Yeah. 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 Um, um, uh, let's say song... Um, what kind of song is it? It is a number 16. And number 16 is a... No fucking kidding, a patter song. Um, oh, now? Yeah. <laughs> that one actually works. That's the, a great timing. Okay. Patter song. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Uh, I just hit enter this. and I didn't, I didn't set it up. Um, well, let's, let's see. Maybe it'll do it. Song, patter song. You do a patter song. Yeah. The end. <laughs> All right, we're gonna need a whole bunch more of those. Verse well, that's great. two. Let's let's see what it does. I'm so jazz jack about the uh, AI today. It is. Yeah, been... I was gonna say the AI is doing a great job. Yeah, today, bringing forward just a whole bunch of actual musical things. Um, let's not end the song because that's a. Uh... Um, let's say verse three, you meet a girl. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Great. Three. He's just rattling them off. Um, yeah. Um, cool. You meet a girl, an angel even. There it is. Yeah. Just short clipped statements that I can follow up on. Yeah. Wow. It works. it works really well. Perfect. Whoa. 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 <laughs> I was like, we know what we're doing now. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, God. And let's say, the oh. let's say the chorus is the people in the bar speaking to him. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and then, well, it turns out she's not. She's not yours. You can correct her right away. <laughs> you wish your joints were? <laughs> <laughs> it's the simple things in life. Uh, That's really funny. Oh, no, they're just detailing the fall of your entire relationship. It's it's we're, we're planning it out, even though it hasn't happened. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, Another exactly. Dream ballet. Another uh, second patter song dream ballet. <laughs> yeah. This one's a dream ballet of the of the gums. And I no. think so. Verse three, he comes back in, um, and he sings this. Okay. So yeah. structurally, then he takes one and two. He takes one, two, and three, right? Oh, then the chorus is. Yeah, he's speaking. He's speaking in the, in the third bar. person about himself, right? Um. Um. And then he sings three. Uh, let's not end it there. Hmm. Uh, let's just do. Let's, I'm just gonna click one more time. So, so yeah. it would be he takes first one, two, three, and then bar te bar people come in. You get to know her. She's an angel. She's perfect, and she's yours. And then we can trade lines. Um, and then they can say the first one. You hate cleaning, and you hate cooking. Uh, and he'll say, and you, and I hate cooking. You wish your joints work, and your back, and your legs. And, your legs. and then they sing. You cry. You blame her. And then he picks up. Uh, um. For verse three, all the way down to uh, the end. Okay. Yeah. And we're speaking in the third person as if we're saying this to ourselves, right? Um, yeah. So play me a patter song. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Brian, can you say you start to clean? You start to clean some mugs and explain your predicament to the customers. The bills, the rent, the groceries. Getting old used to be fun. Now you're stuck cleaning the floors and washing dishes. You take the cash, you count the days. You hope it's enough to make it out. You wish it was yesterday when you were playing a kid. 
playing ball. You met a girl, an angel even. You flirt, you make a joke, and you're in love, and she won't take you home. The angels and demons start to dance. And an angel sings. You get to know her, an angel, and she's perfect, and she's yours. You hate cleaning. You hate cooking. And you wish you were joints worked. And your back. And your legs. You cry. You blame her. Maybe it would be better if you hadn't met her at all. Maybe that's be best. She might lead you astray. So it's for the best. You run downstairs and you hide in your room and you're alone. You close your eyes, think of her. You miss her. You want her. You get up and go. You try to get her back. You'll do anything. You beg. You plead. You explain the sign. of Solomon uh -oh. says <laughs> no. But the sign of Solomon says no. Oh no. Oh god. You break down, you, I think this is just what he says afterward. You break down, you try to wait, you try anything. You wait, the clock ticks, the minutes pass by, you watch, the door opens, and in walks. You light a cigarette and think of her. Your girlfriend? We're going to say, but it is not your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, it is Lucifer. He says... Uh, Ryan, take it away. But it is not your girlfriend. It is Lucifer. He says... His horns, brother. What? I don't know what you mean. It's okay. I forgive you. It's not your fault. I should know. I'm the first fallen. Yeah. So where do you get those cool hats? I think I might need I think I might need to buy a few more. Uh, has Lucifer been wearing a cool hat up to now? <laughs> he has been. <laughs> Wait, in my oh, opinion. Shit, really? Wait, Noah, could you show me the image of Lucifer you were drawing earlier? Uh sure. Let me go back to nope, not there, a little bit further back, and uh wait, oh. Oh, there he is. He is where all right. Just carefully balanced to cover his horns, I suppose. Yeah, shush. No, it looks good. I like it. Is that Frank Sinatra? Uh, inspired yeah. by, yes. <laughs> Fabulous. Love it. Yeah, I think I might need to buy a few more. I heard of the hat shop. It's at 6th and 5th. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, where are you going? It's like they say, every man for himself. You stand in front of the hat shop. The sign in the window reads, <laughs> hats for the fallen, sale. <laughs> you walk in and to the counter. 
The shop clerk has a rack of hats and a stand of horns. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, how can I help you today? I need a hat. Yeah, you do. Get a hat. I need a hat fit for an angel. I think we gotta upend the status quo. I think we gotta say, screw you, eternal struggle. Okay. I am not playing by your rules no more. You can't make no. me a devil if I don't wanna be. Um, I need a hat fit for an angel. Ah, uh, of course, sir. Uh, we have many fine styles. Perfect. And do you have any smaller fedoras for demons? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm afraid we don't. We, uh, we only carry sizes up to 7.5. Our, our stock is all pre-bought. Huh. What do you mean? Sounds like a song. <laughs> <laughs> a song about hats, perhaps? Uh, let's say it is a number seven. <laughs> it is... A I want a hat song. Villain song. <laughs> hey! The uh, Hat Man villain song. Um, it is the title um, Pre-Bot Stock. <laughs> the villain is capitalism. Uh, parentheses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Screw you. You, whatever that uh, uh, nonsense McCarthy. word musicals. This is McCarthyisms. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, Flahooly? Yeah. Flo yeah. <laughs> Pre bought stock and ode to the perils of capitalism. <laughs> this song was huge when it came out. Well, when it wasn't it being censored it. on the radio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big hit at parties. Piano bars everywhere. People keep re requesting uh, the hats for the fallen. Hats for the fallen. <laughs> Fabulous. Who who sings hats for the fallen? I think it is our old Eastern European lady who runs the hat shop. <laughs> can All you right. Give, can you Melissa? give us a violin ode? <laughs> Check. Christ. <laughs> what? Well, um. Fuck. I don't know what that would be. Well, that's good. I'll take that. Yeah. I'm just going to channel a lot of Lenya. <laughs> the stock market is booming. Everybody buys shares off. Buy low, make money, easy as pie. You buy a few shares of Victorian hats. Strong buy, strong buy. Let's see how it pans out. Ahem. <laughs> 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 Everything is right. <laughs> Everything feels right. Stocks are high. Prices are low. How much for the haberdashery? Four hundred dollars, of course. What? Well, you see, most of our products are bought by the Illuminati. They buy in bulk and... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm waiting for this one to keep going. You thought you'd make a deal, but the devil got to you. And now you're stuck. The devil laughs. You can sell my socks or pre bought. No! You try to go back to your homeland, but you can't leave your trapped. Chorus 2. Song became a bit autobiographical. <laughs> you gotta sing about what you know, Jack. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Life is great! Life is fine! But still, you're poor and you're cold! You try to sell your hat, but nobody wants it. You just can't get rid of it. You go to the pawn shop. You go to the dump. You take it to down. You come back. It's still there. No. No. No, the hat is still there. <laughs> uh, I type bridge, but it hasn't been doing it. Oh, no, it's an error code. <laughs> No, it says, the beat gets faster with a waltz-esque twist. Uh, we're spinning around the haberdashery. You go back, you try again. They accept, but they cheat. You keep making money, but it doesn't grow. There's no more than what was there before. Final chorus. Uh. Come on, AI, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really long instrumental about a hat. But maybe if, if I... But it's too late. No! Got a chance, but I'll do You've anything. lost your chance. No. You bought the bar. How else would you I grow? Throw, you throw your fedora on the ground. <sighs> a pigeon picks it up. You run after it. You chase it down the street. A taxi drives by. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> That's the end of this. Oh, thank God. All right. So the pigeon stole your fedora, the last thing that you had to your name, and then was hit by a taxi, killing the pigeon and thus leaving you completely broke. It is a warning on the dangers of capitalism. <laughs> I, I for one, feel very warned right now. I, my lesson has been learned. I don't know about you guys. Good um, Lord. Wait, is, her name is Isabella, right? Yeah. Isabella Divine. Um, Vine will. I gotta say, Jack, as someone who's like, "What's a vile song?" That was that, those those runs were pretty <laughs> vile, Ian. <laughs> I uh, I made it up. I hope it was Violian, but thank you. Yeah, it was. Um, it was good. Okay, cool. I think the lyrics the lyrics helped inform that, and your performance of it made me go like, oh, I I know what this is now. Yeah. Um, I just didn't have the words for it before. Really, vile is in us all. If we just oh, need boy. to listen, he really is. And maybe I'm not willing to, but he will anyways. You sit on the curb watching the taxis drive by your new hat on your head. It is a nice hat. Perhaps Isabella Divine will be able to love you as long as you keep your hat on. You pick it up off the ground, put it back on. Uh, I can get you a job. A cop walks by. Uh, excuse me, you, you, you dropped this. 
Is this yours? You bet it is. <laughs> Thanks. Anytime. You walk down the street. You look at the item you picked up. It is an Go oh, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> is this yours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is mine. <laughs> You walk down the street. You look at the item you picked up. It is an ivory pitchfork. <laughs> what the? You look around. Ah! A hooded figure swoops in, grabbing the pitchfork. You jump out of the way. What are you? I am a winged ghoul. Okay. I do want to say it's it's 9.58. How do you want to tie this all together? What's it to you? <laughs> the ghoul flies away. Just some color for the world of New York. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this they say New York's really known for its... You know, they say New York's, though, it's going to the dogs, right? Like, every year it's getting worse and worse. Yeah, it's worse and worse. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go down the street for you. Pigeons stealing hats, ghouls crashing in India. Find an ivory pitchfork. <laughs> <laughs> you follow the fiend. You look down. You see the fiend drop it. You pick up another item. What are you? I'm a hellhound. What do you do to me? What do you to me? What do you to me? <laughs> what do you to me? What's it to you and what that, are you to me? That's a classic New York <laughs> slang. What do you to me? <laughs> the hellhound runs away. You continue following the fiend. Uh, you wonder why do you stay in this <laughs> there it is. crazy city? Yeah. Yeah. You wonder, why do you stay in this crazy city? <laughs> this city fucking sucks. You turn around. The hag who looked like a mummy is standing there. What are you? I am your fairy godmother. <clears throat> what can I do for you? I could use some more gold. You have the golden touch. Just a few more wishes. What else can I do? <laughs> this is definitely like you're in Times Square and someone's dressed up as Iron Man is like, you want to take a picture? <laughs> I'm your fairy godmother. You want some wishes? <sighs> what else can I do? You can meet the man of your dreams, even make a new best friend. How? Make a wish. Can I be rich? I can make that happen. I want a million. Done. <laughs> can I be thin? I can make you thinner. <laughs> <laughs> this is some body positivity. Just <laughs> what is happening? I think we have to. Can I leave this city? <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. Let's, I'm going let's... to Wyoming. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Never see Isabella again. Yeah. You Never know, see ghouls, nothing. Oh my god. Can I leave this city? I can grant you your heart desire. I want to leave this city. I know that this isn't what you really wanted, but this is all I can give you. I understand. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks.
I was going to say, it's a ticket. It's a train ticket. Oh, damn. It's a ticket etiquette. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah, do it. You, do you, you want to get rid away. of that? You run into... Oh, go ahead. No. Keep... keep walk, read this, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You walk away from the hag, hoping she left you alone. You run into more... Is it supposed to be fog? I think it's is fey. Fey, like what? fairy creatures. Fairy creatures. Oh. I've um, never heard that word before. You run into more fey. Of paper oh, in your hand. It is a train <laughs> ticket there it is. To, to Connecticut. West Harbor, Connecticut. <laughs> Um, let's, uh, what's our, uh, what's Closing our dramatic device there. again? Oh, um, juxtaposition. shoot, juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. Um, uh, song. What, what is the grand finale? What kind of song is the grand finale of this show? Let's find out. Why it's an opening number. <laughs> <laughs> Bold choice. This has all been lead up to a, to a musical <laughs> about <laughs> Connecticut. Because what is an ending if not a new beginning? But a new beginning. <laughs> Number. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and we're going to call it song um, pressing through the fae. Uh, getting far away. Um, verse one starts with, um, the city is so tall, but it is feeling so small. A nice juxtaposition. Nice. Well done. Tall and small. <sighs> Before she left, pressed a small piece of pepper in your hand. <laughs> it, oh, shit. It is a train ticket to Connecticut. You just gotta snort it and sneeze. Yeah, that's, that's how, how that's works. how fey trains work. You throw pepper at them, and oh my god, it's late. Opening number, pressing through the fey, getting far away. The city is so tall, but it's feeling. So small, it's like there's nowhere to go. But you just keep on walking, back walking up the stairs. You see the djinn <laughs> who just help you. He says, What are you? I'm a cobalt. <laughs> seem a bit lost. Yeah, I, uh... Yeah, press past him. You don't have time for gin in Grand Central Station. You gotta get to Connecticut. Oh, that's why it's gin. I'm pressing through the fey to get away from the din. I'm pressing through the way just to get away from that gin. You fly up, you sing, you get away. You continue, continue pressing through the fey. You travel for hours. Verse two, the train. Leaving the city.
Ryan, take it away with the parentheses. <sighs> Ryan, are you there? We can't hear you. I haven't, I've all I've heard is Jackson's piano. Oh, no. oh. we have the train is leaving the city. Is your line? The train is leaving the city. Uh. Oh, have you not heard any of the music so far, or the singing so far? I heard a little bit, and then it was just all Jackson. I thought you were. Oh no! Covering. Oh, it. just vamping for a real long time. It's been yeah, a while. You're waiting for. Do you have the train is leaving the city? The you say. Okay, it's for first two. Yeah. The train is leaving the city, and you say. What are you? I'm a griffin. Have you been riding this for quite some time? I can't say I have. I thought gnomes had stubby legs. <laughs> you seem to be pretty good. Just trying to make a living. Work hard. Play harder. <laughs> Great advice. Yeah. Thanks, Griffin. Classic Griffins. <laughs> Always work and play. Work and play. play. That's what a lion eagle says. Oh my God! Jesus Christ! Let it end, AI. Just let us leave the city. I'm pressing through the fay. Get away from the din. I'm pressing through the way just to get away from that gin. You, you arrive. arrive at Penn State. Go, go. <laughs> you take out a map. What are you? I'm an app. Damn it. What do you want from me? I need directions. <laughs> <laughs> Every verse beginning with what are you followed by I am in another assorted magical creature <laughs> Let me uh, offer you some life advice in this trying time. Yeah, I need directions imp. Do you know the way to Connecticut? <laughs> <laughs> oh My god, please please be good AI. I've just hit enter We need to get to this uh... Oh, there we go can get you there thank you you leave you travel to New York you make it to Grand Central you buy your ticket you board and you sit back you watch as the train starts moving now a spotlight shines on you um final chorus um, I guess that was us pushing through the subway, which is more accurate a indication oh, of New York City than, yeah. Oh, that makes sense why we keep seeing all of these creatures, yeah. Final chorus. Finally getting away. Okay, come on, give me some text AI. Oh man, here we go. From the, from the factory? <laughs> all right. Finally getting away from all the fairy. The nymphs are disappearing. The gnomes are smiling. The scrut are walking away. And you're finally free. A cat is asleep in a bed of hay. We need a final something in your new home. You've arrived, you made it. Let's say. Also, what's a scrunt? Someone want to tell me what I a scrunt is? I can't wait to find out. <laughs> I would love to know, too. It's one of those things that um, 
only exists in the mind of the New Yorker panelist, Noah, which you are channeling now, so you're the only one who can tell us. All right. Well, I believe a scrunt is known for its five legs. I like the hidden bass clef, Noah, that is in that wave. Thank you. <laughs> you uh, pet oh. All right. <laughs> we got you the final. The Go. You pet the cat next to you, and you leave New York behind you. You walk through the trees, and you smell the air, the leaves, the grass, the flowers, the dew, the squirrels, the birds, the bees, and the trees. You walk down to the river, and you see the water. It flows and glistens. Oh, is this it? We've made it out of the city. No more weird creatures. No more angels threatening to kill us. I think we say flowing to a brand new day. I think we should take off our hat and see if the horns are still there, I just realized. <laughs> Lots of oh. rhymes. Flowing to a brand new day. Do you have that, Melissa? Oh, yeah. Flowing oh. to a brand new day. New things will come your way. Until another day. You sit down by the river. You take in the view. You look up. And you say, I'm making the best of this. You wave at the fade. You watch them fade. You stand up. And you walk to the car. <laughs> is that, is that? Oh, I hear typing. You got one last, oh, are you going to check to see if we still have horns? No. So I feel like that's the, the most I think it's one of the part. stupid things. You close the storybook. Ah! <laughs> there it is. You close the storybook you are writing and place it on the dash. All right. All right. Um, well, we could leave it. Let's leave it right there. The end. Beat your heart out, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> um, wow. I don't think we're going to do a final song today. I think we can just leave it there. Do you guys yeah. want to talk a little bit about uh, what we did? We feel like we accomplished our goal today. <laughs> what does everyone think? Reflecting back on this journey that we've come on, do we think we've written the greatest MGM musical of all time? Uh, that's a resounding yes from from Ryan, who's just like resolutely nodding. Uh, Melissa is like shrugging and and, and from uncertain an, from an academic sense. Melissa, yeah, how academically, did we, how did we do, how Professor? Did we do? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, totally. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh -huh. <laughs> academically, yeah. No, I yeah. think we got a C. We're gonna find out. We got a C. We Jack. dropped some themes. We set up some stuff, and we didn't. You know, there was a, some. We lost a few characters. In, <laughs> yeah, back to. All right. Um, okay. But you know, we did. We did. We did all right. I mean, I see still passes, Eric. I see's okay. Yeah. How How and do you first, How do you feel about doing an, an opening number to end the show? <laughs> Classic. B bold move, right? It is. What made it an opening number, though? You know. Uh, what? Well, yeah. Other than we, we're introducing that it's a new beginning, we needed to know that it was an yeah. opening number. It really Not put imbued the spirit. It really questioned what the word opening really means. Yeah, uh, that's you know, it. In a, in a real Wittgensteinian kind of way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zizek would be proud. If we put um, an opening in a box, um, would we all know if we only heard other people call us it was an opening? Yeah, yeah. exactly. If you put a, a box yeah. with two openings, where's the real opening? The is one, one on an the opening side and one an exit? To you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And exactly. who's to say? Perhaps yeah. we just entered the box in the wrong direction. All I understand from this musical is that capitalism is the enemy. <laughs> And, hey, if you're going to take anything away from this musical, that's the one to do. <laughs> Great. 
Well, <laughs> well, there's nothing else to say. Except that you can find us at patreon.com slash imperfect librarians. You can type exclamation point discord into the chat to join our imperfect librarians discord community. And I leave you all with a quote from the legendary Judy Garland, known for her sunny and optimistic roles. When asked about her life in an interview, she said, behind every cloud is another cloud. Good night, everybody. Just like this story, Jack. <laughs> no, we nailed it, Eric. We nailed it. Mm -hmm.